Now that we've gone over naming notes, let's get into scales. So in traditional Western music theory, we use the 12 notes that we went over in the previous lesson. Here they are again. So when you play these notes in different combinations, you get different flavors and moods and textures and sounds. And most music doesn't use all 12 notes at once. Instead, it just picks a specific group of generally five to seven of these notes to focus on at a time. And those combinations, the notes we choose to include or exclude, is called the key signature. And if you play all the notes that you've decided to use in your key signature in order, from bottom to top, you're playing them in a scale. So let's talk about scales. All right, so I want to go over the two most common scales in music theory, the major and minor scales. If you exclude all of the sharps and flats and just use A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you get the A minor scale. If you play it from A, a to B to C to D to E to F to G, in that order, that's an A minor scale. And if you play a scale from its first note all the way up to where that first note repeats again, for instance, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, then you're playing the scale what's called one octave. So between A and the next A, you have one octave. So if you take those same notes from the A minor scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and start from C, so you make C the first note, then you have C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And that's the C major scale. So once again, if you play the scale from C all the way up to the next C, that's an octave. So we've got the A minor scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And we have the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. All using those same notes, just in a different order. So in other words, if you arrange the natural notes, meaning the ones that don't have sharp or flat in their names, in order, starting on A, you get A minor. If you start them on C, you get C major. So let's do a quiz. Find and play an A minor scale one octave on your piano or on the A string of your guitar. So you're going to need to use the stuff we went over in the first lesson combined with this lesson to get that answer. So go ahead and we're going to pause the video and give it a shot and then resume when you think you've got it and I'll give the answer in a few seconds. All right. So it should have looked and sounded like this. Now we're going to play the C major scale one octave. So go ahead and see if you can find that on your A string or on your piano. Okay, so it should have looked and sounded like this.
Anytime you learn a scale on your instrument, you should immediately start improvising with it so it can get in your ears. So this time you should spend a few minutes playing the A minor and C major scales slowly enough so that you can recognize the names of the notes as you play them. That's very important. Then try jamming with the A minor scale over an A minor backing track and the C major scale over a C major backing track. I've provided backing tracks in the description of this video, but you can also search YouTube for a ton of backing tracks, and that's what I tend to do, because you don't want to just work with one backing track like it's to be boring. So you just go into YouTube, search A minor backing track, then play your A minor scale over it, and start messing around with different combinations of notes within the scale, different melodies, and it's a lot of fun. Same for C major. Go look for a C major backing track, play your C major scale. Uh, the C major scale is just one of many major scales we're going to use, and so I want to I want to get deeper into major scales for now. We're going to put minor scales to the side for a second. Just focus on C major, and we'll learn a lot about major scales by looking at C major. So if we look at one octave of C major on the piano, C D E F G A B C. You'll notice that the C is a whole step away from D, D is a whole step from E. E is a half step from F, F is a whole step from G, G is a whole step from A, A is a whole step from B, and B is a half step from C. In other words, all of the notes are a whole step apart, except for the third note, between the third note and the fourth, and the, which is, in this case, E to F, and the seventh and the eighth note, which is B to C. Those are half steps, but every other note's got a whole step between it. And this happens to be true of all major scales. So in a G major scale, everything is a whole step apart, except for the third and fourth notes of that scale, and the seventh and eighth notes of that scale. So you can use that formula to create the other major scales. So let's try this with G. G is 1, so we need a whole step to get to the 2, which is A. G, a whole step, is A. Then we need a whole step from 2 to 3. Okay, so that's going to be A to B. So G is 1, A is 2, B is 3. Okay, now we need to go a half step from 3 to 4. So that's B to C. Cool. Now we have a whole step from 4 to 5, C to D. Then a whole step from 5 to 6. It's going to be D to E. Then a whole step from 6 to 7. So E goes up a whole step to F sharp. And then we need to go... Uh, from F sharp to G, which is just a half step. Um, so we've got from 7 to 8 our half step, and we've got from 3 to 4 our half step. So we end up with this scale, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. So you found the G major scale by comparing the interval relationships between each note to what you found in the C major scale. So let's see if you can use that formula to figure out the A major scale and play it one octave on the piano or on the A string of your guitar. So give it a shot.
Okay, so you should have gotten A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. have a whole step from 1 to 2, that's A to B, 2 to 3 is B to C sharp, half step from 3 to 4, which is C sharp to D, then a whole step from 4 to 5, which is D to E, 5 to 6 is a whole step as well, so that's E to F sharp, 6 to 7 is another whole step, F sharp to G sharp, and then you should have your last half step, which is 7 to 8, G sharp to A. So it's, it's, all you have to really remember is there's a whole step between everything, except between 3 and 4 and 7 and 8. So I'd go over this lesson and the first lesson to make you sure you feel very comfortable with all the concepts and then you can join me for lesson 3 where we'll talk about key signatures.